Hey guys, this is Coach Chris. Welcome to my channel where we break down international level fights for strategies and tactics that you can use in your own matches. Um, apologies about this background here. I'm trying to, I don't have anything to cover up the green screen when I don't really want to change my shirt. Um, today, instead of going over matches, we're going over rule changes because there's been a lot of confusion. I've heard uh, from you guys that there's confusion and frustration. So I uh, credit to username playlist here on YouTube, broke down uh, a lot of the rules. I gave my friend Arvin Alcantara some of the rules, and then I searched, and it seemed like there's some conflicting reports, so I went to the source document, which uh, I can see why it would be confusing, because they have stuff, for example, in this section. Like, this is the same section as what's in uh, this proposal side, but in the higher in the document, and then you get lower, it's moved to this side, and then there's stuff over here. So I'm going to lean toward the people who are actually at the tournament and kind of this new system here on the right, because I think... I think that's how they tried to organize it, but it was very confusing. So thank you to Arvin and thank you to Playlist for um, breaking these down. Um, so first off, most of you guys already know, and this is easy to tell, that the tournaments are now best of three instead of um, a cumulative points at the end of three rounds, which I kind of like because that means if you're down by a lot in the first round, then you don't have to spend two rounds, three rounds making it up. And that very much alters the strategy because if there's a reset in the second round, you can fight on even ground versus like I'm already down and so there's added pressure and the added bonus to your opponent knowing that you have to come in so they can um, it, it tilts, tilts the field in their favor kind of for the duration of the match which is not super which is kind of good in a way but overall I think it's better that it's best of three versus um, three rounds cumulative after that, there's round loss. Looks like after five Gumjong. I know some people are saying um, four. Uh, this is, oh, sorry, this is a rule. These are uh, engagement rules. Was, where did it go? There's a section here where it says there's four, but then it crosses it out, and then it says five. Um, so let's see if I can scroll and find that. No, it's in too high in the document. It, it is, it's a little bit confusing. This is the, still the engagement rules. Three, three. Oh, you guys can check the source document. It's on the it's on the website, but there's a section where um, it says four, and then it crosses that out and says five. And I'm trying. Oh, here it is. In best of three, when contest contestant receives four, cross out five. Gum jung, the opponent will be declared the winner of a round. This is the same text above um, above in the document. It's uh, the same thing, but it's over here on the right side. So it is kind of confusing. Um, but given that people who are at Korea Open um, and the Asian Taekwondo Championships had told me that it was five. I'm just going to go with it's five. Then after that, 12 points to win the round. And I kind of agree with that because it's like if you're down by 12, that's a that's a pretty big loss. And you're probably not going to make that up in the remaining time. Um, so I don't really mind that one. Headshots can now be disputed even if it hit the if it, even if it hit the side of the headgear, but not the face. Uh, if this was a rule back in 2016, that would have been really cool because um, maybe I could have went even further in the Olympic run. But anyway, that's all in the past. Uh, so that would have been tight. And I kind of like that because sometimes the electronic headgears don't pick up stuff. Now, the next bigger ones, I'm kind of going from big broad perspective into closer and closer range. Um, next big one was... For leg pumps, there's only three. There's only two allowed, not three. So instead of going cut, 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 you can only do cut, cut. So that's a big one. There's another one where it's saying the removal of bent leg cancel. I don't know if that's been a rule before. It was certainly not really a rule during my time. Um, but your cancels are going to have to be straight leg. This also removes the uh, Husini style punch where you kind of crash with a bent leg. You lift your front leg and you um, bounce in super aggressively and then you land a punch because they can't really do anything against that. So you're going to have to try and do that with a straight leg. This is probably also why Jun Jang cuts the way he does with a straight front leg and they can lift it to an axe kick. Um, you're no longer allowed to forearm hook or use your forearm or use your hand to hook the front leg the way uh, I used to do. So that's not allowed anymore. And I don't really mind that also because I can imagine a lot of people are grabbing and really abusing that. Um, there's no penalty for falling after scoring a valid spin kick. And I can see this because they want viewership and a lot of people like to look at fancy spins hitting people. That gets a lot of views. Next, all the way in the clinch. Um, clinch, 
like I was showing here below, you used to say five seconds um, after the, so when, when you're in a clinch, ref will give a command to fight. You have, it previously it said five, I think above in this document it says five, and then down here they cross out and say three, so I'm gonna go with three. I heard the, the rule's about four seconds. You have four seconds to fight, and if neither of you um, break from the clinch and fight, or try and initiate action, both of you get a gumjong, which counts towards your five gumjong round loss. Or if one person is trying to fight and the other person is shutting it down, then the person who's shutting down action will get the gumjong. Um, you cannot have your hands past the plane of your opponent. And if you're watching all, all some of the recent fights, you're, you're it's very uh, obvious that they're very conscious of that rule. And so you can see people, instead of trying to manipulate in the clinch, they're just focused on getting their hand behind their opponent because um, they don't want to get called for a gumjong. So you're also not allowed to do any of the lockup methods I used before to stay safe in a clinch. You got to learn, you're going to have to learn clinch game. Like that's, uh, there's no way around it. They want you to fight in the clinch. Um, the rules on grabbing are stricter. That kind of goes above to what I was saying with the um, moving or moving the leg. And pushing is still allowed, but it has to be a quick push versus a long, prolonged, arduous, uh, like you're pu pushing a slight kind of push. So keep this in mind as you guys are fighting and as we watch uh, fights going on in the future, it's going to be interesting to see how people's strategies change specifically. A uh, smaller guy's game has changed a little bit because you can't do a slow creeping push anymore. Um, and also keep in mind too, for you guys who are competing, it's going to take some time for the uh, organization to teach all the refs at the international level how to implement the rules. Sometimes they're a little bit strict. Some tournaments are like some tournaments, especially during my time, they're a little bit too strict. And then you can see it gradually fade back a little bit and get a little bit more lax in the months following as they're trying to calibrate what should be called a uh, gumjong, which what's not supposed to be called gumjong. And then once it's at the international level, as that's settling, there's even more lag time if you guys are fighting at the national level where the more local co uh, I won't say coaches, the more local referees are also trying to get on the ball. They're going to the coaching seminars and um, it's going to take even more lag time for them to get on board. So, uh, as always, I've always been a proponent of don't let things outside of your control affect you. So you don't control the ref. If the ref is making bad calls, that's they're just doing it to the best of their ability. You always generally want the refs on your side. So try and keep don't don't let that affect the way you're fighting. Um, but with that in mind, keep these rules in mind. And if I'm wrong about any of these rules, please let me know in the comments. I'll try and pin your comments so I can have those corrections. And if you guys got any value out of this video, please like, share, and subscribe. That really helps me out. See you guys next time.